The Loch Ness Monster by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. This is the title page. To my husband, Robin, and at the risk of being tacky to his novel, Princes of New York. In faraway Scotland, there was a famous lake called Loch Ness, and legend had it that deep in this lake lived a monster. No one had ever seen it. But guess what? The legend was false. In truth, way, way down at the bottom of Loch Ness, there lived not one, but three monsters. There was Nessie, her husband Fergus, and their wee laddie, Angus. From the time he was a baby, Angus's parents had taught him the five basic monster rules. Five basic monster rules. Five, never behave in a monstrous manner. Four, never eat with your thumbs. Three, always say excuse me when you cough, sneeze, or burp. Two, always pick up after yourself. One, never, ever, ever go up to the surface of the lock. So Angus was well behaved, ate with a spoon, and said excuse me when he coughed, sneezed, or burped. But as he grew bigger, so did his messes. Mother Nessie skidded across the floor on Angus's slimy lockweed collection and crashed into Father Fergus. Father Fergus tripped over Angus's fishy dolls and landed in the porridge. Angus loved the action. His parents did not. Have you noticed that our laddie leaves scurps all over his dishes, they asked, and puggy knit shells on the floor? And that his hummy dotties are hopelessly mixed up? And that we're surrounded by grotty laundry? What had happened to their tidy home? Angus had happened. It was time to enforce basic monster rule number two. Always pick up after yourself. So Angus's parents told him that while they loved him very much, until he cleaned up after himself, he would have to stay in his room so that his stuff would stop spreading. Meanwhile, they would deliver his daily meal of milk and tatties in a can. So Angus went off to his room. In the days that followed, he didn't feel lonesome, for he had so much interesting stuff. Every day he would play with his toys, tossing each one on the floor when he had finished. Before long, the floor was full, so Angus tossed his used items onto the bed. And a monstrously messy mountain began to grow. Books and toys, rock collection, slimy lock, we ew, fishy dolls, tatty cans, hummy dotties too, grotty laundry, puggy knits, spoon and scurpy cup, messy mountain moving higher up and up and up. At night, as was his habit, Angus would check to be sure there were no monsters under the bed. Then he would strap on his mountain gear and make the long climb to his lumpy sleeping perch. Each night this climb took a little longer because each day he added books and toys, rock collection, slimy lockweed, ew, fishy dolls, tatty cans, hummy dotties too grotty laundry, puggy knits, spoon and scurpy cup, messy mountain moving higher up and up and up. Not only was the climb a long way up, on the nights when Angus fell out of bed, it was a long way down. Now Angus was beginning to miss his parents. 
He was uncomfortable on his lumpy bed and dreadfully hot as he neared the sun on the surface of the lock. Surface of the lock? Angus had forgotten basic monster rule number one. Never, ever, ever go up to the surface of the lock. But here was Angus, rising. Meanwhile, three friends gathered on the shores of Loch Ness. A duck, a goat, and a heeland coo looked out over the water as they had every morning for years, waiting patiently for the Loch Ness monster to appear. And at last, on this particular morning, they saw a wee ripple way out on the loch. Could it possibly be? They focused their camera, binoculars, and telescope, and what they saw was Sloppy Angus, just awakening and rising on his bed. Or what once had been his bed? What a mess! exclaimed the three observers. The trio sadly shook their heads. It's nay the Loch Ness Monster, tis the Loch Ness Monster. And what did Angus see on the shore? What he saw made him feel absolutely peely wally. Monstrous land monsters. The little one had enormous feet that could probably stomp you flat in a second. The middle one had a hairy chin, fierce spears on its noggin, and big googly eyes. And the big one must have been 500 feet tall, with a long green snout. And it made the most horrible sound. Moo! 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 Time to move! Suddenly, Sloppy Angus wanted to clean up. He gathered up as much stuff as his arms could hold and climbed down, down, down to the bottom of his mountain. Let's see. Slimy lockweed on the shelf, puggy knit shells in a laundry basket, books and toys in the garbage, grotty laundry in the fish tank. No, wait, that wasn't right. Slimy lockweed in the fish tank, grotty laundry in the basket, puggy knit shells in the garbage, books and toys on the shelf. Now, Angus remembered. And up, up he went for another load. Up and down, and up and down. Load after load, until at last all of his stuff had found a place. Books and toys, rock collection, slimy lockweed, ew, fishy dolls, tatty cans, hummy dotties too, grotty laundry, puggy knit, spoon and scurpy cup, messy mountain is no more, Angus cleaned it up. Angus was thrilled to see his parents, and as he passed them he called cheerfully, I'm off to wash my dishes and recycle my tatties in a can cans. His mother and father were concerned. Are ye Peely Wally, laddie? But Angus was not Peely Wally. He was just glad to be plain Angus instead of sloppy Angus. That night he had a wonderful dinner with his parents and land monster free dreams on his smooth, cool bed. Epilogue but Angus didn't want his parents to think he was perfect, so once in a while he acted a little bit monstrous and left a very wee mess. The end.